I think they're building trust, like that for sure. Like you've talked about Brian Flores, that defense, yep. like how good they've been on that side of the ball. We talked earlier this year about how they've protected Sam Darnold, but also how they're trusting him. Like they're not playing him like he's, um, you know, a young quarterback without experience. Now his experience has been rocky, but they get into a critical moment in this game. Think about it. it it's a six-point game. It's a one-score game. They throw the ball three times in a row. They package this play so it was an alert, and then he takes a shot down the field to Jefferson. Then they throw on first down, get eight yards, and on second and two, an environment where you want to protect the lead, they're trusting their quarterback. So I think what's happening is they feel like they have a guy that they can trust and is playing at a high level. And by the way, like 11 touchdowns, like the rest of the league, all these other great quarterbacks, he's doing that. that I think you have to give Kevin O'Connell a lot of credit. I, I think he trusted him before anybody else did, and it's building. You're seeing it layer after layer. Again, these are good teams that they're beating, and they're off to a 4-0 start. Buffalo had aspirations of getting to that same 4-0 start, and the last time we saw their quarterback, it was Monday night. They had five first-half touchdowns, Tim. He had four of them. At half tonight in Baltimore, we'll get to Derrick Henry, who was yeah. insane again. But at the half in Baltimore, Buffalo only had three points. Let's start with the Raven yeah. defense. What did they do so well against a guy who came in blazing? Well, I, I think their athleticism was evident tonight. Mm -hmm. the way, and, you know, Kyle Hamilton gets a lot of credit, and rightfully so. I mean, this is a play he makes early in the football game that's absurd. But they just did a good job of defending the things you have to defend when you face Buffalo, like whether it was a zone read on a third and one or whether it's running with crossing routes, they did an excellent job with that. And so I think when we go back to talking about this team that was blowing leads and who we really kind of knew that they were, they're a team that can run the football. You mentioned it with Henry. But that there have always been a team that plays really good defense. They did tonight for sure. And they also gave the ball to 22, and the very first play he goes 87 yards. And I said it over the highlight, and I'm not – I'm not asking you to explain it necessarily, yeah. but in a position, Tim, where we see attrition set in and, and often the cliff arrives in a hurry. Here's a guy who's the biggest guy out there that's like a featured running back one, yeah. and he's outrunning the secondary after he barrels over Dallas yeah. last week. What would you say about the marriage of this guy in this offense? I think I actually think it's a great fit, even though what he did – for the majority of his career in Tennessee, mm -hmm. was not the same type of run stuff that you'll see often in Baltimore. But because of the element of Lamar, mm -hmm. because you have to defend Lamar, I think you're going to get good run looks. And to your point about what you said in the highlight, look, he's like a defensive end playing tailback, and people aren't chasing him down. Still. That's <laughs> what's remarkable about Derrick Henry. And look, I, I think they're going to be physical. They've got a big physical fullback. They've got big physical tight ends, and they have a running. Uh, they have a quarterback that you have to account for. Mm -hmm. I think Derrick Henry's going to have a monster year as long as he's healthy. And, and tonight's to me, to me is the night that shows sort of their ceiling. Like for years, and I've talked goes back to the Rosillo days on the radio. There was always the question, "How good is your good?" Mm -hmm. I feel like Baltimore, 60 minutes tonight against a really good Buffalo team. I know they've lost twice, yeah. but you show what the, like their ceilings as high as anyone in the NFL, is it not? Yeah, I think that's a great point because their good is an MVP caliber quarterback, <laughs> right. a guy that. Listen, if you're going to have him in that offense, could he maybe lead the league in rushing? Like that type of good, even at his age. And then a defense that has all types of length and athleticism, ability to rush the passer. So, yeah, like their good is excellent. Think about their receivers. I mean, the receivers have come along. Sure. It was a pretty suffocating defense tonight. Again, against the guy in Allen who last we saw him was basically done playing after two quarters mm -hmm. because they had put that game on Monday night to bed. Kansas City did beat Baltimore, though, to start the season, and they are 4-0. But I tell you, at some point I wonder this. You lose Hollywood Brown before the season starts. You lose Pacheco to that injury. We don't know how long that's going to be, and it seems almost certain that Rasheed Rice has lost for the year the way Kansas City has been talking about this injury. It'll be confirmed with an MRI on Monday. A at what point are you unable to outrun attrition? Yeah. He, I get what 15 is, but I just – do yeah. you, how concerning are the injuries to these significant contributors on offense? I think it's a huge concern. Now, I do think because it's early enough in the year, mm -hmm. 
that they can work on maybe adding a different receiver. But receiver was a problem for him a year ago. Rasheed Rice was one of the only bright spots at receiver. Came on, you know, kind of towards the end of the season. Oh, for you sure. Know, but for some of the, you know, some stuff in the playoffs with other guys. But that's why they draft Xavier, Xavier Worthy. But now, now his menu is going to have to expand. You know, Sky Moore, whose menu seems limited, is going to have to expand. And so, and then obviously, you know, rely more on Kelsey. But listen, there's probably not a better coach. There's probably not a better quarterback to survive it. But all that being said, I think that they end up looking around and trying to add to their roster. I, I completely agree. I think you have to because the point you made, and, and Rice certainly showed it in their, in their last game uh, last week, mm-hmm. um, he was the feature against Atlanta. He was the guy that, yep. that Mahomes is looking for all night long, had a monster night, and was certainly set up for a monster year. I, I would think as great as Mahomes is, I would think they, they, they've got to look elsewhere mm-hmm. and outside of their own room. Uh, to see what they can find. I just don't know who in the league's going to want to help them. Well, yeah, I don't know either. <laughs> but it's early enough. If this were to happen later, they'd right. be in trouble. All right. Folks closer to our studios want to see how that man can stack it after Monday night. Washington and Jaden Daniels. They spotted the card seven. Cards went right down the field and scored, but then Washington answered. And then Daniels hits Alamade Zacchaeus. The drive continues. Jeremy McNichols had a big performance. Austin Eckler out. After the concussion on Monday night, that's a touchdown. It's a 14 to 7 game. Fourth and one. Kyler Murray sacked by Doris Armstrong and the commander defense, which was a real question. And after that first drive of the game, had some wondering how many this offense was going to need to score. Well, as it turns out, they got enough right now. There's Daniels, calls his own number. It's 24 7. It's now 27 14. This is the money down in the NFL. Third and goal. It's so difficult to get touchdowns down here inside goal to go from the nine. They find Terry McLaurin. He had that incredible catch on Monday. Successful two point conversion makes it a 21 point game. Now it's Daniels swings to Zacchaeus. And it is all cake and ice cream for this Washington offense. There's Cliff Kingsbury. Of course is a former coach of the cards and McNichols his second of the game Daniels. 26 of 30. We'll get to the specifics of that. But first, let's hear from their head coach, Dan Quinn, in a very happy locker room. I think we said last night, man. We said uh, it's great when you count on others and they count on you. That way, victory is produced by everybody. All right? And that's what tonight was, man. Fast, physical. We said anybody, anywhere, any mother time. Right? So we did what we came to do. All right? So uh, there'll be a number of game balls uh, that will be. Uh, issuing out, I'm sure, tomorrow. But there's one mother that ain't leaving this city without one. Cliff! Happy bunch of commanders. Happy city because four games into Daniel's career, he's the first player in NFL history, let alone a rookie, to complete at least 85% of his pass attempts in consecutive games. 87% Sunday after completing a rookie record 91% on Monday night against the Bengals, including that one on a third down to basically put it to bed. For the season, Daniels is completing just over 82% of his passes, the second player in NFL history with an 80% completion percentage over any four-game span, let alone his first four. The other is Peyton Manning in one of his five MVP seasons. All the completions have added up to a ton of points. Daniels just the second rookie quarterback in the last three decades to lead his team to at least 38 in back-to-back starts. The other, Russell Wilson in 2012 for the Seahawks, and they won the Super Bowl in his second season. Now, it is no secret we do this show from the district. It is no secret how long it has been since this franchise has had this area legitimately excited. But the Monday Nighter, followed up by a dominant road win, has lit the fuse. It would be correct to say it's only four games, but I can tell you nobody cares about the context at the moment here because the results aren't as important as how Jaden Daniels looks in compiling them. He's unbothered, he's unhurried, he's unimpressed. And it's exactly as he was described to me from within the organization. Supremely confident, not the least bit arrogant. I was there last week to do a feature for Monday Night Countdown. I told head coach Dan Quinn and their GM Adam Peters, I hope you all get to see what this place is like if you really get it going. They stack a few more, 
They might get a chance to find out in a hurry. Jaden Daniels mm. and this Washington team, they found something. And I'm just interested in, and as you watch this rookie, mm. what it is that you find most impressive about him. I think it's actually what you were just saying, Scott, about being unhurried, unbothered. Like, that's how he plays. In the quarterback position, you can get bothered a lot. There's a lot going on. Things around you on your own side can go poorly. But when you watch him play, he just, I feel like he sees it and he's, and it's slow to him. Look, third and two, he gets blitzed. They actually have it picked up, but it's just, it's easy. Replace the blitzer with the throw, pick up the first down. Down in the red zone, third and 10. You know, the underneath coverage as they run this double post concept is actually relatively deep. But because they flatten their feet, kind of unbothered by it, unhurried by it, and delivers a great throw to the back of the end zone. Then the two point play, look, he's unbothered by the leverage that Zach Ertz is having to deal with. Look at when this ball comes out, where it ends up being wow. in the window of the throw. It just is, and then when you watch him run, like we didn't, you had it in the highlight, but when you see him run, it's like he's gliding. He's not, not taking big hits. He's doing a good job with everything. And so, you know, some guys it seems frantic can be like a fire drill at times. It just doesn't feel that way or look that way at all for him. I don't ever want to be guilty of hyperbole. You spent some time here playing for this franchise. You, you understand this area. I, I mean, it's been, it's been so long. Unfortunately, that's part of the part that made it so long. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying you have context and understanding of what this place is, is sort yeah. of the, the, the history of what it is. And it's only four games. Understood. But four games in, what this guy is showing you, is it reasonable to think, you know what? You had a second pick, and you got a guy that gives you a reason to think maybe this is the guy. Well, he's been better than any of the other rookie quarterbacks so far. So far. And the fact is that Dan Quinn has a you know history of doing an excellent job coaching the defensive side of the ball. Mm -hmm. Cliff Kingsbury might be a great match for Jaden Daniels. And if that's the case, and you look at what's happened in the division so yep. far, off to a pretty good start. Daniel spoke of Cliff, said there's a great trust. You could see it. It's And Cliff told me this summer just – Early on, just like the, the, this is a special young guy. And, and you get it. Like, Coach, what's he going to say? This guy's a bum. Like, you, you know that the, co the coach is always going to probably see the best version of what they hope somebody can be. But I'm telling you, like, to a man, everybody out there had the same sort of – same description of, of what we're seeing. It's early, but it's, it's yeah. optimism is pretty abundant where we're sitting right now. The Jets had 13 offensive drives Sunday. Tied for the most without a touchdown in any start of Aaron Rodgers' career. The other was in 2010. Rodgers was 33-1 and in his career when the defense held the opponent to 10 or fewer. Gave up 10 in this one, but it's not enough. They lose 10-9. Tim Hasselbeck is back. I want to just start with what they're talking about with, like, a clean operation and the yeah. cadence. You played quarterback. For, I, I feel like I understand football, but, like, in what way would that bog yeah. down what you're doing? You know, unless Aaron is doing a lot of new things, obviously false starts, things of that nature, uh -huh. kind of killing yourself. But since part of what Aaron's done really well, so I think what Aaron would, his reaction is, hey, well, rather than eliminate a tool in the toolbox, right. let's, let's get good at it. I'm watching this game, and Nick's had negative seven passing yards in the first half. He's a rookie. They got, got it going a little bit. We just showed you the, 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 the big pass to Cortland Sutton and the touchdown. And that's enough to give him a lead because their defense is playing fantastic. But I just kept waiting because it's Rodgers, and I know that the weather sucked, but they're going to go down and they're going to win the game. They didn't. What happened? I think the biggest thing that's surprising is Aaron Rodgers used to fear blitzing him because he was so good pre-snap that he would make you pay. And the way you get people to stop blitzing you is you make them pay when they do. Here's a good example. There's seven in the box. You have six protectors, the five offensive linemen and Brees Hall. Brees Hall is responsible for that A-gap pressure as well as the guy coming off the edge. Well, the A-gap pressure leaves. He's got to pick up the man coming from Rodgers' blind side. He does it and he gets sacked. So now Vance Joseph is saying, look, let's heat him up. They don't have answers. Now this is empty. Five blockers, six rushers. All right, well, what's your zero blitz beater? A tight end of the flat with blockers out in front? Okay, so you're going to get the same look. Now your adjustment is, hey, fake that tight end of the flat and throw some route combination behind it. They bring six, but no, they bail out of it, and then they switch the flat in the end cut. Basically, Vance Joseph one step ahead of what the Jets were trying to do offensively. And so I, I think, yes, and you're right to give Vance Joseph credit. But then also when you look at the Jets, 
Like, what's your answer to people bringing heat? What's your answer to people bringing pressure? Yeah, the weather was bad, but like Rodgers in Green Bay, that was, if you did that, it was he and Devontae Adams and you paid for it. Right. They don't have that in Green in, in, in New York right now. And I'm looking over my shoulder at their schedule and their next two in some, in some big standalone games, including a, a Monday Night Football, will be up there for. First, you go across the pond, you play a Minnesota team who hasn't lost, and you go, you welcome Buffalo to your place. Um, these next couple are, are, are going to show a decent – that's a decent enough chunk of, of what they are, aren't they? I, I mean, th so. those games. Those games for sure. I mean, there's really one game that you look at it and you're, they're probably favored in. And it's New England. Eight, New England. And so – and I think they just looked out of sync on offense. And I feel like we haven't really seen them in sync this season. That's the part where I think you would say, like, hey, when does it click? When does this start to happen? Like, he tries to throw the, you know, the, the middle read to uh, Wilson. He doesn't even look for the football. And it's like Aaron can't believe that, that he didn't look for the ball. There's too many things where they just don't feel like they're on the same page. And, and just as, as a final thought of just one game, and again, the same thing I'd say about the commanders earlier. It's only four games. You want to make any sweeping sort of declarations about this is what you are in, in stone because things will change. But... A game like this where you don't win it and it's not a clean operation and you miss a kick and then you're just left to wonder, how do we lose to this rookie quarterback who really didn't do a whole lot to hurt us? How, how damaging is just that one little snapshot to kind of change the way you felt about yourself after you smoke New England on a Thursday? When you're scoring nine points at home and you keep getting opportunity after opportunity right. and your quarterback is one of the best that's ever played the game mm – -hmm. Like, it's not a real good sign for how your football team right. is playing.